Hey boys and girls, we are on lesson 11-3, combined volumes of prisms. You need your workbook, pencil, multiplication chart, um, and a pencil. Make sure you're following along with me as I'm going through these slides. You can see up here, I've got our formula. So our formula for volume is length times width times height. So we're multiplying three um, different uh, uh, dimensions, there are three different, yeah, dimensions to get our volume. You'll notice that I kind of color coded it here. So our length times width can also be referred to as our base. If they give you the base number, they've done part of the work for you. And you can be like, woohoo, little less multiplication to do. So I try to do green. Our length times width is our base times height will also give us our volume. Here's our learning goal. You can read it with me. I can find volume of a solid figure composed of two rectangular prisms. So today is gonna be a little bit more challenging. I'm gonna warn you. Um, it's something that we can work through, but you have to go slow and you have to take your time and you have to write stuff down. If you do not do that, you choose not to do that, it will be much harder and it won't make a whole lot of sense and I'd be frustrated if I were you. So let's make sure we're following our, along, writing them down. Okay. Here we are on page 465, so make sure you open up to that. This is our solvent chair for 11.3. Ariel is thinking of a three-dimensional figure that is made by combining two rectangular prisms. Can you find the volume of this three-dimensional figure? Solve this problem any way you choose. So I want you to think back to the problem that we did with the cubes on um, lesson one. And it was the last problem on the, the practice page. And it was built up of two separate rectangular prisms. And you guys had to break it apart, find the two separate, and then add them together. So go ahead and give that a try with this. It's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I'll walk you through it in a moment. Okay, so basically we have two ways we can break this up. I could break this shape up so that it's um, this little square or rectangular prism sitting on this one down here and make this one long, or I could break it up lengthwise. So you have a little bit of a choice every single time that you're breaking up your shape and trying to figure out um, your uh, volumes of each one. So I'm going to go ahead and do it this way and I'm going to outline. I would recommend you guys outline just the back one right now so we can visualize. Oopsies. Try to trace the lines. Hold on. Um, and I know you, we can't see back behind this, but that kind of helps you visualize how we're going to find this taller rectangular prism first and then this smaller one second. So I still need my length times width times height. So the reason this is a little bit tricky is because it's this whole thing. Um, it's hard to find the different, like, so if I'm looking at the length right here and right here of this back one, it's not labeled. And so you have to look for lines that are going the same direction and the same length. So what I'm gonna do is use my handy dandy green marker if I want to find this one right here, then I've got to look across and then I've got to look across again. Okay, well, there's my length right there. So, so far I have volume equals four times. So now I got to find my width, which would normally be this section right here. However, this six centimeters is for this entire thing right there. So that is not going to, oh, cut it, sorry. Um, so I have to look at the same direction, same length. So if I look right here, okay, no label. I'm gonna go directly across from that. So you, you go directly across, just like we did on the other one. Here, okay, nothing. All right, if I look here, I've got two centimeters. So I can multiply it by two there. And then my last one is my height. Thankfully, this one is labeled in the spot that we're used to looking for it. So I've got seven centimeters. I don't know why I keep flip flopping back and forth. Right there. And this is just my volume for this back one. So now if I'm gonna set up my formula for this bottom one, my length is still four and it's labeled right there, which is kind of nice. So we've got our four times. Now my width is, remember this whole back is not, is the six. So I don't need this part. I've already found it with the back part. So if this is two, the whole thing is six, what am I missing right here? So we can use a little bit of subtraction to find it too. So I could do six, take away the two back here, 
and then I'd have four. Or you guys can still pay attention to, well, that's going straight across, straight across. There's my four. So I have four times four, and now I need my height. And normally we look for height like right here, but you can see that the height is just labeled over there. So we have four times four times two. So now what I have to do is multiply through each of these and combine, and when we combine, we're adding. So four times two, well, that's eight times seven, and eight times seven is 56. So what I like to do is write my number and circle it on that part of the shape. So I just know that I've done it and it's there. And then I have four times four, well, that's 16 times two is gonna be 32. Okay, and so what I said, I have a lot of circles going on. What I said, our last step is 56 plus 32. Six plus two is eight. Five plus three is eight. So we get 88 and it's centimeters cubed like that. Lots of steps today. I know it's gonna be a little bit more challenging, but again, you guys can do it if we go slow, we ask questions and you know we really think about uh, the drawing it out and making sure we're labeling it all. Okay. Let's go ahead and look through our essential question and on our, virtual, our visual learning bridge. How can we find the volume of a solid figure composed of two rectangular prisms? So what I wanna point out is we've got this missing chunk right here. So that's why I can't just do length times width times height because it's not gonna get this chunk. Or if I did length times width times this height, it would add in that chunk. So that's why we have to break it apart and find two separate ones because we don't have a formula that would, it would be nice, but we don't have a formula that will tell it for that whole weird wonky shape. The shape and size of a storage building are shown in the figure. The building supervisor wants to find the volume to determine how much storage space is available. What is the volume of the building? So our little friend here is gonna tell us, you can find the volume of this figure by finding the volume of two rectangular prisms that make up that figure. So finding the separate ones, splitting it up, and then adding them together. Okay, so they are gonna separate it horizontally here. And you could have done it, you know, either way, but this is the way that they're doing it and that's fine because you could have also done it this way. Either way should get you the same answer. So the building can be separated into two rectangular prisms as shown. Identify the measurements for the length, width, and height. So for B, they've got the length right here is 10. They've got the width back is nine and the height is seven. So thankfully this one was labeled, they did a good job splitting it up because this was labeled where we normally see these. So then now I have to do it for A. You'll notice this little 12 right here, that's for all of this. And we don't need this part. So this 12 is not gonna do us much good. So I've got to figure out my length right here. And remember what I taught you, look directly across the rectangle to the lines that are parallel and then the lines that are parallel, and you'll get your length right there, four. And then our width back, what you're gonna notice is this line is the same as this line, is the same as this line. So if I go directly across my rectangular prism, I'm gonna end up at that nine. And then my height, which we would normally see here, is also here, or, you know, we saw that seven there, is right there. Did we need this six? No, we did not because this little bit is the six part, but that was combined in the 10. If I go six plus four, see how that line and this line, which might be kind of hard to see, hold on. Let me erase a little. So this line here, four, plus this line here, six, equals this 10 on the other side. So we don't need this six, just like we don't need that 12. So then they're gonna write out their volume of prison A, which is the tinier one, four length, nine is the width, five is the height. And they got 180. And then they find the volume of prison B. So our length is 10, our width is nine, and our height is seven. So we get 630. So now we need to add to find the total volumes. They have it horizontal there. I would take your 630 and your 180 and put it up and down, line up the place values just so we don't make any silly mistakes, especially if you've done all that hard work before getting here. And then when you add it together, you get 800 cubic meters. You can, or 810, sorry. 
You can also write that as m cubed like that, a little bit shorter hand. Okay, let's go ahead and try some guided practice. Dookie dookie. And I'm warning you, these are a little bit trickier. We're going to be patient and figure it out. We'll go slow. So it says in one and two, use this uh, solid below. Use the dash line. The dash line separates it into two rectangular prisms, A and B. So you'll see that they already split this one for you. They haven't split up these guys for you. So we're going to follow that along and find our, our um, uh, area or volume of A and then B, and they've split it like a little dashy like that. Okay, so what are the length, width, and height of prism A? So I need to find just that area right there. This entire area is six feet. I don't want that. I just want this little area, This because this is a part of that six feet, and we don't want that. So remember what I told you, look directly across to the parallel lines in your rectangular prism. And then, okay, well, that didn't have a label either. So we're gonna look directly across again. Ooh, we get four feet as our length right there. Okay, then I need my width, how deep it is. So you can see over in prism B, the whole shape is three feet deep, which we could use that. But if you want to double check it, remember, look across, look across. We've got all these lines that are going the same direction, same length. It's still three feet. So our width is going to be, oop, I don't need that. Four times three. Okay. And then I need my height. If I look at this height, that's five. It's only going halfway up. So I need to look over here for my height. So part of today is just about taking into consideration other parts of the shape than what we've kind of been spoon fed in our last lesson. They said, here's your length, here's your width, here's your, they're only really giving you three measurements or even two sometimes. And so then we know right away, oh, multiply and move on. Today requires a lot more critical thinking and I'm telling you, it is challenging, but it is something that we can go slow, break it down and find those answers. So we've got four times three times 12 for prism A. I'm going to put a little A next to it. And so then it wants us to find prism B. So for prism B, my length, I'm going to switch colors here. I, now I need this little chunk right here, right? For my length. So I'm going to go directly across. Okay. We'll go directly across. There is my length two. So we're going to do two times my width already there for me, three times my height, bada bing, already there for me, which is kind of nice, right? Um, so then, does it want us to solve it? I don't think so. Okay, so then it says, what is another way we could separate the shape into two rectangular prisms? What are, uh, so now <laughs> it wants us to break it down a different way. So if I erase all my wonderful work, if I were to break it down like this, break it down, no, not really. I'm not gonna start dancing, guys, don't worry. So then now I'm trying to find B right here. Um, and it goes underneath A back there. So I almost don't even wanna draw that line because it, it's going back behind. So my length is gonna be six times, and that's right there. Still gonna be three times five. Okay, well that was pretty harmless. So now we just have to figure out A, that's the other way now. And so what I'm gonna do is I need to find my length from here to here. This six is all of it, remember? So I'm gonna Look here, look directly across, look across again and we get four. Okay, my width back is the same as down there, so I know it's three. You know, if you like wanna look at your lines here, here, here. And then my height, ooh, they tell us how nice of them, is seven. So we have four times three times seven. Okay, what I want you to do right now is actually practice finding the volume. So let's solve through number one, 
four times three times 12 plus two times three times five. I want you to give it a try and then we'll go over it all together. Okay, I'm actually gonna come work over here where I've got all this extra space. If I do four times three, our first one we've got four times three times 12. Um, so if I do four times three, I know that's 12. And again, I write my answer to that right below it. And then I'm gonna bring down my multiplication symbol and my 12. 12 times 12 is one of those facts that I know. I remember being on the bus in elementary school in like probably fourth grade and being, and knowing 12 times 12 is 144. And it is just something I never forgot. <laughs> there it is. So then we're gonna do our next one. We've got two times three times, oop, not 15, thank goodness, five. So two times three is gonna give me six. You'll notice I wrote it right below it. And then I'm gonna bring down my times, bring down my five, because that's what I've got left. Six times five gives me 30. So now I need to add them together. I'm gonna to do 30 added onto my 144. Four plus zero is four. Four plus three is my seven, and then my one just comes down. So we get 174 feet cubed for my label on there. Okay, I know this is really challenging. I know um, it can get a little frustrating, especially when they have all those extra numbers in there sometimes, but we are gonna plow on the head, keep going. Okay, I want you to give number three a try. We're gonna split it up together, and then I'll have you give it a try. So I'm looking at this. I might split it so there's a long skinny one and kind of what we're doing, you can sort of visualize it here. Uh, you think it's like a flat, almost like book or something. And then there's a tiny little extra block on top of it. So you're going to find the length, width and height of this one. And they're all on there. Pretty pretty easily, pretty, pretty good. So there's A. And then for B, that's this other shape. Let me change my colors. Now our length is gonna be here. Our width goes back, so that should be pretty similar. And sometimes I just like to trace them in two different colors. It helps me break it up in my head. So if you've got two separate crowns or highlighters or so now you can kind of see we've got those two shapes there. It's really defined. So you're finding your length, your width, and then your height. Careful, this eight is for this whole thing. You're not gonna wanna use eight. So go ahead, give that a try, find your dimensions, try your multiplication, and then we'll go through it together. Okie dokie superstars. I'm gonna find my prism A, my volume equals Here's my length, 15, right? It was right there for me. And then my width goes back, there's seven, which is kind of nice. Now my height isn't labeled here, and I warned you, we're not gonna wanna use that eight, because this is clearly not eight, right? It's teeny tiny. So if I come directly across here, and then directly across here, remember we're just going to the opposite side, I can see that it's two. So we have 15 times seven times two for our first one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that math and then we'll worry about the second one. So 15 times seven, that's not one that I know off the top of my head. I'm not worried about it, I'm not embarrassed about it. I'm just gonna write it down and solve it off to the side. So, and I'm not lazy, some days, but not with math, right? Never be lazy with your math. So I'm gonna take seven times five is 35. Seven times one is seven, plus three more is 10. So we get 105 here. And I'm gonna bring down my multiplication symbol. I'm gonna bring down my two. So now I have 105 times two. If you even wanna just add it when you get to that point, repeated addition can be kind of a nice break. We get 10, one, two. We get 210. You might be able to do that in your head. If you take 100 and 100, you get 200. Five and five is 10. Put it together, you get 210. What are we dealing in? Inches, cubed, fun fact. Inches is are really our only label that has a little period after it. Don't ask me why, because I don't know, but I do it. Okay, now we need to figure out our volume of our other one, hoof jaw. So I'm looking at just this little green part right here. Well, it's not labeled, so I'm gonna go across my, my rectangle. 
Okay, it's not labeled there. I'm gonna go across again so you can see, I'm not going to these side lines, I'm going directly across, directly across. And it's slanted because it's a 3D picture. Ooh, I can see that I'm gonna have five times. Okay, so now I need my width. Well, if I look at this, I don't, that's the same as this one down here. I can still use that number if you're worried about it and you wanna do some directly acrosses, you can come up, directly across, come over, directly across, we get seven. And my last one is gonna be my height. I warned you, don't use that eight, it's no good. This little part down here was two, okay? If the whole thing is eight, you can use subtraction to figure out what is that missing distance. Eight take away two is six. But we can also use our directly across, directly across. So if I look at this sign, there's nothing there. I can come up here, directly across, nothing there. I can come over here, aha, here's my six. And it looks kind of funny, but that's what the arrow is pointing to. So we have five times seven times six. Five times seven I know is 35. 35 times six is not something I know. So I'm gonna just buckle up, do the work off to the side, write it down. Five times six is 30. Six times three is 18, plus three more is 21. So we get 210, hop! Look at that. I didn't even know that was gonna happen, but there you go, that's what happened. We got 210 for this one, and we got 210 for that one. So I'm gonna add those together, 210 plus 210, and we get 420 inches cubed for our final exhausting what? answer we can find. Okay. Uh, I'm going to break it off here because this is a long video. I told you today's a little bit more complex. We will go over a couple more in group.